Okay, my friends, welcome to Mud Fossil Physics. Roger once again, and this is the whiteboard on particle physics. Now, um, down to the yellow spot, I feel is pretty solid evidence to support that. And then down here is some theoretical stuff. Is 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 the particles flux toruses? Are they working with capacitive inductive reactants, exactly how do they move and how do they shake and vibrate and all that business. So it's a little, forget that down there. Now up here though, we are going to be talking about the makeup of the nucleus, how many particles are literally exist, and I say there is two in electron flood theory. There is no neutron, proton, electron. There is a positron and an electron. One of them is positive, one of them is negative. Same mass, same electron volts, one positive, one negative. One's up and one's down. They seem to fuse together and make dipoles. Now, we're going to go in a little deeper. First, we're going to look at my explanation of electron flooding the universe. We will at some point get quite deep into this, but I say light speed is variable. It's not fixed. The red shift is simply light slowing down because it's being pulled back from the source that it was emitted from. Light is a dipole, pluses and minuses glued together, and that's exactly what they look like. There is no universal expansion of the universe. It is simply light slowing down. Protons, as we think of them, actually consist of 1,836 bits, half positive, half negative. Neutrons have an additional negative, which makes them a negative product. Electrons are only one little bit of this, and some of them are in, mixed with protons and neutrons, if you want to call it that. I call it a snowball. They used to call it plum pudding, whatever you want to call it. It's nothing but a whole batch of positives and negatives all stuck together until they hit resonance. That's what's called electron flood theory. And with electron flood theory, it accounts for everything there is. It accounts for gravity, it accounts for light, it accounts for heat, it accounts for electricity and static, and everything that we see, and dark energy and dark matter, because the dark energy is nothing more than the light, which is particles that have a weight, they have a mass, they have a voltage, they have an energy, so they're particles that are matter, that have energy, but they are dark as they spin through space until they concuss with the outer layer of our atmosphere, then they display. Then some of them make it all the way through and hit things down here. The moon re-radiates slowly, only the very long frequencies because it's re-radiating. This is radiation of all frequencies which is called the, the full spectrum. Uh, and therefore you see full spectrum light. Here you only see red light from the moon. You don't see, and actually red blood, it looks black in moonlight is what I'm told. I really, I gotta be honest with you, I don't think I've seen it to be perfectly honest, but I believe that's the truth. Now, some light spins slower than other light. Depends on, now, this is where it gets in a little bit tricky. Is it the size of the particle, or is it strictly the frequency, or is it both? We're going to get in deep on this. This is electron flood theory. Just so we're on the same page, this is red laser light, and it looks like it's just a big glob, glob of light coming through, which it is not. It is a particle. This is an accelerator crusher. Venturi that is forcing the light to come through, crush itself, and expose itself as a particle and not a wave of nothingness. And it shows that light can accelerate, light is a particle, light can plasmatize, light turns into raw energy plasma, it appears. As it comes out from the Cheryenkov radiation, comes towards us and makes Higgs fields. There's a particle that we've seen here that um, 
I have no idea what it is. It was from a white particle and it crashed into another Higgs field and created that. This is the dipole particle I talked about before. Back to back dipoles, it appears. And this is the light spinning to the right, drifting to the left. Open here, compressed here, that means it's slowing down. Light spins like this. It's a particle. As it moves, it spins. The, the longer frequencies are here. The short frequencies are here. It is a wave. If you look at that from the side, it looks like a wave, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But it's a particle. The particle spins. And as it spins, it creates waves. We see them as waves because you can only take a picture of a chunk at a time. All right, just let's take a look at this. Now, this is what they're seeing in this region in space. It's very interesting. And let this play and you watch and you're going to see the sun mixing particles. Now this goes way back. This is the the mixing of the positive and negative particles it looks like to me. Somehow they're balling up into these balls of one type of energy and then another. To me that's charge separation. And then they somehow they mix back together or, and separate. I don't really understand the process. Okay, my friends, this is where it really gets tricky. They retain the definition of an ephem ephemeral region, which is out right outside the sun, as a feature which appears to originate as a compact bipole. We call them dipoles now. It's a, it's a positive negative and grows as a unit in total flux for a short time after its birth. Now, then it goes down to say it's the fragmentation of these network magnetic fields, separation of opposite polarities, halves of effort as they grow and evolve. Very, very hard to, to comprehend what's going on here. Now, I want you to watch what's going to go on here. You're going to see black and white spewing all over the place, separating, pulling apart, recombining. You watch. And this goes way back, I think, 1996. Now look at what's going on here. They're spreading apart. They're recombining. There's total opposition of charges. Blackness and whiteness. Now let me ask you a question, my friends. Okay, for all practical effect, this is the Earth. This is the space that we're coming through. The Earth spins to the right as it moves this way in space here it's stationary and but in space the earth moving to the right spinning these are the magnetic stripes that are in the ocean we know they're there as the earth spins those stripes spin through the magnetic particles in this case in a stator which is would not be our case they spin through the magnetic particles that exist in space the same exact same thing so as we spin through there, we are creating our magnetic fields around our spinning planet. Those magnetic fields keep other magnetic fields, uh, magnetic particles from hitting us devastatingly. All right, and this 5G is not a good idea because we're putting the particles that would normally impact into the atmosphere and be restricted from hitting us, we're forcing them down on the surface. I have to admit, I can't understand why this hasn't been taken into account. These are magnetic stripes, right? Rock formed when Earth's magnetic field was reversed. That's not true. It's as the mantle comes up, it separates in these bands and makes itself into magnetic stripes, I believe because it's being forced against against the magnetic field that the Earth is in, pushing this into a negative pile up on this side and a positive pile up on that side. When it stops, it freezes in that condition and then it might start up over here again somewhere and create the same striping. That is what's going on there. It's not from the magnetic reversal. There's so many stripes that the Earth would be reversed every 15 minutes. 
what happens is as the, or as as rock is heated, it loses its magnetic propensities, and then as it cools down, it takes on the field that's impressed upon it and this is being impressed upon it negatively push the negative particles it's spinning into is pushing this way it will impress a negativeness on that side it's, it's it, or it could oppress a negativeness on this side and force the positives to the other side I'm not sure but it's going to have an impact and it's going to create a separation of charges all right, this is Jupiter, but they all do the same thing. As long as it's spinning, and if if it's spinning to the right this way, the North Pole will be this way. And that's what it does. It pulls electrons in from the bottom, and it spews them out the top around in a circle. And what it does is it pulls electrons into the Earth. That's why the Earth is a, is a negative, attractive source. It's a positive and it pulls electrons in. Light is totally electrons. Static is totally electrons. Um, electricity is totally electrons. And bzzz, they go right to Earth. I, I, again, this is Jupiter. I understand that. But if it was Earth, this is what would happen. Bzzz, right to Earth. Now, things that are not completely electrons, they fall at certain rates, depending upon how many extra electrons they have. And in electron flood theory, there's only a certain number of extra electrons and you need extra electrons to be pulled to a positive attractive source which is Earth and guess what doesn't have enough hydrogen or helium they're anti-gravity because they don't have enough electrons to be pulled they're magnetically being pushed off the Earth 